should hold that. Can everybody hear me? Should I use the microphone? Can you hear me at the back? Yep. Okay. I might. No? Do you want me to hold the microphone? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> How's that? Excellent. Good. Okay. Um, I'll give a quick introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Nathan Scott. I work in Australia, just outside Melbourne, uh, for Red Hat um, in the engineering group. Uh, in particular, I work in a, a smallish group, sorry, a small group of about 10 guys um, developing performance analysis tools at Red Hat, uh, ma maintaining community tools and actively developing some other tools. Um, so we look after, for Red Hat, PCP, which I'll talk about today, uh, but also Valgrind, SystemTap, uh, O-Profile and libraries like Pappy, um, LFutils and several other uh, little bits and pieces. Um, but the newest project that we've taken on is the Performance Copilot Toolkit, which is quite a large body of code. Um, and today I'm going to talk about how to, oh, I'll give a, a good introduction to it, explain what it's all about if you haven't seen it before. Uh, and I'll talk about ways that you can get more value out of it by extending it using Python, um, the Python interfaces which are available for it. Um, okay, so um, uh, this is pretty much what I'll cover today. I'll uh, give an overview of PCP and then I'll uh, probably about the first half of the talk, I'll try and give you a, as much detail as I can about PCP. Usually when I give this talk, I talk for about 45 minutes about PCP. It's a fairly extensive code base, there's a lot of tools. Um, so I'll give as much depth as I can before I sidetrack into how you can use uh, Python, how you can extend it with Python, um, because there's a lot of value to be had by extending this toolkit. Uh, and there's two directions of extension that I'll talk about, um, ext extending it in terms of collecting new performance data and then in terms of uh, writing tools for monitoring performance, so tools that consume that data and generate reports about performance data or might show graphically performance data, all of which can be done in Python. And I'll go through as quickly as I can some of the libraries and um, give you some examples of how to do that. Oops. Right, so a quick overview, what is PCP? Um, first and foremost, it's a toolkit for doing performance analysis at the system level. Uh, obviously it's open source, um, otherwise uh, Red Hat wouldn't be behind it. Uh, it's released, uh, it's primarily C code uh, with some C++ code and several interfaces to libraries. Um, there's a few daemons, which I'll talk about in a minute, that you would run on a system that is under analysis. Uh, and there's a whole suite of analysis tools that uh, I'll talk a little bit about, but I, I won't have time to go into the full, uh, the full spiel on those tools. Um, but what I mean by system level performance analysis, so there, oh, there are many different performance tools you can use, but in this context where we're talking about PCP, a system is either a single computer or a collection of uh, computers that are working closely together. They might be transferring data between each other it might be a storage area network, that kind of scenario where you have closely coupled systems where you need to understand what is happening potentially on multiple systems at the same time to truly understand what's going on with the performance of the system. Um, when doing this kind of performance analysis, it's extremely important to have historical data. Um, so in PCP we support both live analysis, so without having to look, um, without having to write data anywhere, you can uh, query data live on the system while it's running, um, but there's also excellent support for recording data uh, from a live system and then playing it back later using the same tools. Uh, I'll, I'll dive more into that later. Um, so this little diagram is just trying to show a performance timeline on a system, things that might be happening on the system. So there's a, a small window of things that are happening right now that are often of interest but there's a huge amount of data historically that you really want to be keeping to do good performance analysis on a system. Um, then there's this magic eight ball area where you try to guess what's going to happen in the future, and this is the realm of capacity planning, 
um, trying to predict future outages and things like that. That's not really the realm of PCP. Um, it's, it's really important to have historical data if you're going to try to do capacity planning and uh, any kind of prediction. Uh, so PCP will support, and I've seen many people using PCP to drive their further analysis or their future predictions, um, but there isn't direct support in PCP for that kind of thing. So it needs to be built on top. Um, it's extensible in the two, di two directions I talked about before. Uh, you can write monitor tools that uh, report on performance data, and you can also write uh, little bits of code that collect data live from the system and feed it into the, the wider PCP toolkit. Um, I'll dive a lot more into those on the next slide. Um, then the last point I want to make in terms of an overview is that being distributed is something that is built into the core of PCP, so all of the tools, every single tool that's in PCP can support monitoring across the network and often can support monitoring multiple hosts at the same time. Um, and I'll, I'll go into what some of those tools are and um, to explain a bit more what I mean by that in a minute. Uh, in terms of the architecture of PCP, so this is the, the live mode architecture diagram that I usually show. It's quite a high level diagram. Um, at the core of everything in live mode is this daemon called PMCD in PCP, which stands for the Performance Metrics Collection Daemon. Uh, it effectively acts as a multiplexer on any host that you want to analyze. You'll be running this daemon, PMCD. Um, it has a plug-in architecture. It doesn't actually know anything at all, really, about performance data. Um, everything that it wants to let client tools on this side, or the, the monitor tools, know about uh, are told to it by these plug-in pieces. And these plug-in pieces can be C code, that's C++, and they can be Python. And we'll, I'll talk a bit more about how to uh, write collectors in Python. So these plugins are things like the Linux kernel, uh, a database, a MySQL database, Postgres, SQL Server, Oracle. Um, it might be a mail queue. All these different domains of performance data you might have on your system, and each of those can have a little piece of code sitting above it, extracting performance data from that subsystem while it's running, and making it available via this PMCD daemon. Um, over here on the blue side, we have uh, just a little collection of some of the monitoring tools that come with PCP. Um, there are literally 30, 40, 50 different tools that form part of the toolkit when you install PCP. You get many other tools than these. Uh, but these are some of the more important ones, so I'll just quickly go through these. Uh, PMLog is the tool that records performance data. It's a monitoring tool just like the other monitor tools. Um, so it can talk to PMCD locally or across a network, another host, and it records data as it sees it happen um, from PMCD. So this is all live data on this side. PMLogger might be writing it to disk. Um, in the demo at the end, hopefully I have time for a demo, I'll show off this PM chart tool a little bit as well as PMIE. Uh, PM chart is a strip chart kind of tool that uh, can plot any performance metric from the system that you've plugged in over here. Um, so any um, disk activity, network activity, database activity, anything to do with performance that is uh, being plugged in on this local or remote system, you can plot in a chart. Um, uh, the, and the last tool I'll talk about, PMIE, st that stands for Performance Metrics Inference Engine, and it's a, a little tool that you can feed rules about performance, and it'll evaluate those rules on a, a sampling interval that you, you give it. Um, and when they become true, or if they become true, those rules, then it will take whatever action you tell it to. Um, so I'll give an example of that as well at the end. But that also is a, a completely flexible tool. Those rules can have any performance data at all that you have on your system. Um, can be things from your application or things from the kernel, and it, they can be combined. So you can see um, activity that's happening in the kernel or in user space as well as in your application and make rules about all the things that are happening at once and then take action on those rules. Um, I, I don't have a lot of time to talk about PMIE. You could almost give a, an entire talk about it on its own. Um, but I have a quick example at the end. I've seen people do things like um, throttling web requests and things like that when the load becomes, uh, starts to become unman unmanageable, sort of getting users to back off on the, the rate of requests. Um, pretty much anything you can do with PMIE. Uh, plugging into Nagios, that kind of thing as well is often done through PMIE. 
Uh, at the core of everything in PCP um, conceptually is this idea of a performance metric. Um, all of the performance metrics have a name, so each metric has a name. So in this example here, I've got disk, devices, reads. Um, so in this, this particular metric is just showing the number of read operations in the system. Um, but the important concept here is that there's a hierarchical namespace for all of the metric names. And this namespace is presented by the collector side to the monitor side. And the monitor side can query what all of the performance data that is available is. And also lots of other metadata about it. Um, so in this example, this is all the metadata. Uh, we have things like uh, the number of read per disk read operations is exported by the kernel as a 32-bit unsigned integer. Uh, it has an indom. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, its semantics are that it's a counter. So in the kernel, it just every time there's a read operation on a device, it bumps a counter by one. Ooh, halfway already. <laughs> um, uh, so that's the counter. There's several other types of metrics that we can have. Uh, there's instantaneous metrics I'll talk about very briefly. Things like the number of users on the system. So that's not a counter, it's just when you sample it, that's the value that's important. Uh, which is unlike, say, the read operations, a counter, which when you sample it, you need to uh, sample it twice, take the delta, um, and do a rate conversion to get things like the number of IOs per second, because the, the number of operations since boot time isn't really useful on its own. So this metadata is an extremely important um, concept uh, that's really baked into PCP and differentiates it from other things like SNMP and other protocols that have been used for performance data in the past. Uh, you have things like um, whether it's in kilobytes, megabytes, whether it's in units of time, that information must be associated with every metric as well. Um, in this case, there's, it's just a count, so there's no other units of interest. Um, there can be help text associated with each metric to help explain what it's all about. Um, and the final concept of metadata is the, well, obviously there are values associated with each metric, um, but it can be, a metric can be a singleton, a single value, or it can have a set of values. So in this case, we have a set of values, uh, so it's evaluated across all the, device, all the block devices. So this is SCSI device A, SCSI device B on this system. Okay, so now we'll dive into um, extending the toolkit using Python. Um, I'll first talk about, ah, um, let me back off a little bit and say I'm going to give this as an example. So I'll try to teach you how to extend PCP using this example of the device mapper cache, uh, which is a, a kernel driver. If you're familiar with Linux, uh, the device mapper is a block layer device driver in the kernel where you can create arbitrary devices and join them together in interesting ways. Uh, it has a particular um, target, as they're called, which is this device mapper cache target. Uh, and it lets you put a fast device in front of a slower device. So this would be something like putting an SSD device in front of a larger, uh, slower spinning disk device to try to optimize access to that slower device. Um, and that's that's basically what device map is all about. It's, it's um, not really important what the details of it are, it's just that we're going to export data from this subsystem and learn how to do it based on this. Uh, one interesting fact here is this little metadata device, which is a, a concept within device mapper caching, uh, and device mapper uses that to um, keep track of what is different between the underlying block device and the SSD device. The details aren't particularly important, but we'll see mention of that later, and it, it's important from a performance point of view. Um, so these are the sorts of things that we want to be exporting performance data about in this example. Um, so just talking about the collector side, if you remember earlier I talked about collectors and monitors. First we're going to talk about how to write collectors in Python. Um, so the, the end goal of this is to have um, some new DM cache, device mapper cache metrics made available into all the tools. So this little image here, this is the PM chart tool that I talked a little bit about earlier. Um, it can display um, chart, arbitrary charts. So this chart down the bottom, for example, is showing data coming out of the kernel about memory utilization within the kernel. Um, and we want to be able to get to the point that we're exporting device mapper cache metrics as well. Um, and we also want to be able to run some of the command line tools 
like PMVAL, um, which shows just the current values or archived values if we're looking historically for metrics. So we're going to be creating metrics like dmcache.dirty and dmcache.read operations and activity that's happening within the device mapper cache. Um, so how do we go about doing that? Um, device mapper gives us a little command, which we uh, have an example of up here. You can run a status command on target cache and it will print out a whole series of statistics for every cache device in your system. Um, so our job as someone writing Python code extending PCP uh, with new metrics is to figure out what these, all are, what these numbers all mean, uh, create metadata about them, and then plug that into the PCP system so that we can plot it and record it and things like that. Um, oh, we have to go quickly through some of these, otherwise we're not going to get a demo. Um, so the, the important concepts are things which I've talked about earlier about metadata. The metrics all have names. Uh, if you choose to have instances, like in this case, we have dmcache1, dmcache2. Those are good options for instances, so sets of values. Uh, and these are all the values through here for all the different metrics that we will create. Um, but to do this in Python, you import pcp.pmda module, you subclass the PMDA class, uh, and then you call add metric to initialize all the metadata about your metrics. Um, and then the, the most interesting piece of code, I suppose, is this fetch callback, which has to answer a query for current values. So um, this will be running live on a system, and the client tools will say, OK, I'd like to know the values for dmcache.dirty or dmcache.readmisses, the, the current value for a metric. And that's what this fetch callback does. But as you can see, it's not going to have a lot of work to do because device map is doing a lot of the work for us. Uh, we're just going to run this command and pick out the individual fields that are of the values that we're interested in. So that's pretty much how you do a collector extension. Um, I'll show you where the code is if you're interested afterwards. Um, it's all part of PCP. So uh, if you install PCP, this code is available for you to have a look at. Um, the other side of the picture that we might want to do is to write some custom tools for monitoring data. So these tools would be extracting the metrics that we've created or extracting other people's metrics, so maybe kernel metrics or hardware metrics, uh, and displaying them in some interesting way, either on the console or through a graphical tool or exporting to a web browser. Um, and all of this can be done using Python as well. So this is an example. This tool is written in Python, this PCP DM cache tool, and it just dumps out the values of the metrics that it, as it samples them. Um, and it can run live from on a remote host, or it can look at historical data. All of that kind of thing is handled for you by the, the Python libraries. So uh, really, it, it's very simple to write a monitoring tool. Um, all it needs to know about um, is the metrics that it's interested in. So that particular example was using DM cache metrics that we've just created and kernel metrics, so from the, um, the block layer in the kernel, combining them together and producing an interesting report about cache uh, hit and miss activity in DM cache. Um, but as you would hope, it, it's pretty simple to write these kind of tools. You just create a metric group manager, uh, you give it the metric names you're interested in, and you create a metric group printer class, and all it is going to, when it's in, evoked, uh, it will have a series of value, values passed to it, all of the metadata with those metrics that you've asked for, uh, and you can format that data however you like, um, or do whatever you want to do with it. Um, but in our example, we're just dumping it on the console. So that metric group manager class, like I was saying, uh, abstracts all the difficult work of dealing with remote hosts, dealing with uh, reading data from the the PCP archive format. Uh, it also abstracts things like sampling. So if you just want to do five samples, or if you want to sample every five seconds, every 10 seconds, all of that is abstracted too. You don't have to write code for that. It even handles things like time windows within the archives. You might be interested in what happened in device mapper land at 2 o'clock in the morning two weeks ago. That kind of thing is all handled for you. You don't have to write code for that. Uh, and it handles time zones, it helps with command line option processing, all sorts of things. Um, so really all you have to do is format the data that you're interested in to display it, however you choose to. Um, well, that's good. So I should have time for a demo, I hope. 
Um, this is where the code is if you're interested in looking at either of those particular pieces. There are many, I think there's like 50 or 60 uh, PMDAs that ship with PCP. All the source is there, of course. Uh, and there are many, many example monitoring tools, but these two are there, part of PCP and are shipped with PCP if you should happen to want to use DM cache. Thanks. Uh, there's a book, uh, an open book that is on the PCP website. You can download that. There's actually two books, but in terms of programming code, uh, you want to be looking at the programmer's guide. There's also a user's and admi administrator's guide, which goes through how to set up PCP and how to do distributed monitoring and how to record data. There's a debugger for PMDAs, which I will have to skip over entirely, but that helps you write um, the collector side. Uh, the website, uh, there's a couple of articles and videos and um, interesting things about PCP on the Red Hat developer blog as well. Um, so I'm going to quickly give a demo with the five minutes I have left, or less than five minutes. Um, if you have questions, maybe fire them off while I'm talking, and I'll answer them as I go. going to be a very quick demo. I've got about two minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, so here we have uh, um, some example archives that I've created. So recorded PCP data, this io.0 index uh, meta, uh, that represents a single PCP archive. So that's recorded performance data. That contains a series of samples that we've taken of device mapper metrics, uh, kernel metrics, network statistics, all sorts of things. You, you choose what you want to record. Um, I won't talk about, uh, I haven't got time to talk about any of the actual recording stuff, but let's go through some examples. So if I run, I think we'll maybe get through the first one. So the archive is the IO. We'll create a CPU view um, and say so disk bytes view. So that is looking at the historical data that I've recorded. Um, you can do all sorts of things with that, but I'll quickly show you some of the device mapper metrics that we've added using our Python code. So for example, if you wanted to look at uh, dirty blocks on any of, the, uh, how much data is actively dirty on any of the device mapper uh, cache devices, we can start plotting that down the bottom. Uh, this charting tool lets you move around within the archive, so it tells you where it's currently up to, which is this slider position. I can move to different points in the archive, and then I can start to play it. Um, let's see, activity, uh, and sort of moving forwards and backwards through the, through the data. Um, and uh, I can sort of drill down, because we have so much detail of performance data, because we can represent anything, you can start at a high level and look at things like uh, processor utilization, the sort of stuff Top will show you, and then dive down into I.O. statistics, the sort of things that I.O. stat might show you, and then go deeper and deeper towards the source of a problem um, through metrics that we may have added or metrics that are already there. Um, but you can use that to drive your analysis. Um, yeah, I think I'm out of time. because <laughs> I can keep going and demoing it, but I, I think I better stop. There's, uh, I'm out of time. Uh, were there any quick questions? Any time for questions? If anyone had any? Um, if we're out of time, please grab me afterwards. Um, well, I don't have a one question at the back. Okay, so um, like this is called performance copilot, co but can you? basically uh, send it any sort of data that you would want to, like, you know, for example, user counts or things like that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Would, you, would you recommend it for that sort of Absolutely. thing? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Definitely. So if you have a, a production system, oh, it, it's all geared towards production system performance analysis. So um, 
anything that is important in terms of performance on your production system. It might be like end user response time from an application, a number of requests coming into a web server, the number of times you're hitting a particular page, um, caching activity within, a, like how much memory is being used in caches within your application. Anything that's important to performance, absolutely you can and I would highly recommend um, if you do choose to use PCB to export as much instrumentation as you can. You, you choose how frequently things will be sampled. So if your instrumentation is expensive to extract, like it, as in CPU-wise or network cost, uh, you can choose how frequently to sample for all of the tools um, so that that cost is amortised over time. Um, it, but on it, like the default installation is extremely low cost. So th and there are ways to instrument applications that are extremely efficient. And so I, the, the, system, the production systems that I've worked on, uh, we always have PCP on all the time on every system um, and all of the applications are, are heavily <laughs> instrumented and all of the activity that's happening within the applications is being recorded all the time for, for later analysis. Thank you very much. And uh, any other questions? Thank you. Excuse me. Sure. Can I have a metrics from remote system? Yes, absolutely. Oh, um, and uh, can uh, if you, so, um, do you mean a collector that is exporting data about a remote system? Yes, you can do that too. Um, some of the agents or the collectors that ship as part of PCP do that. Uh, one example is the Cisco PMDA. So that exports data from a remote Cisco router. Um, so it can connect to the Cisco, um, uses a Telnet-like protocol to extract performance metrics, and it can then export that onto the, the monitor tools. So yes, there, there are examples of things that do that. Thank you so much. The Cisco one? Oh, between clients and monitors in PCP, yes, it's TCP IP based. Yeah. Um, if you go local, so if you're connecting only on the local host, um, it will use a Unix domain socket for communication. Um, but if you're communicating remotely, yes, it's TCP IP. Great, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.